If you have your Bibles, open to the prophetic book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. That's Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. And then go over to the New Testament, to Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Starting a new sermon series for this Advent season entitled, Birthing Legacy for the King. Birthing Legacy for the King is a new sermon series. And this is our first offering. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. And Luke chapter 2, verse 6 through 12. For the 11 o'clock service, I ask Reverend Wendell Banks to come preach it for me. Uh, we traveled last night for 16 hours. And I don't want to try to push myself so much. We have so much to do. We got morning breakfast with our new members. We got the Friendship 101 after service to teach. And I'm growing up a little bit to learn that I can't do it all. Amen. Amen. Can't do it all. I know I've got a lot of preachers around me to preach this word. But I heard a word that Reverend Banks preached entitled, When Jesus Comes to Town. I thought it was such a revelatory word that our congregation would be fed by it. Amen. So when y'all see them at 10, 30, 11, y'all make sure you hug them and say thankful. Thank them for watching your pastor's back. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. And then Luke chapter 2, verse 6 through 12. Isaiah 9. If you're there, say, Pastor, I'm there. If you're still trying to find it. We got a class for you. Amen. No, that's not funny. That's serious. We got a class through the Bible to help you work it out. Because all of us need some Bible work. Amen. Amen. Most of us don't know the 66 books of the Bible by heart. Amen. I'll leave that alone. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. This is the word of God. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment, and with justice, Lord, our mercy. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now go to Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 1. And it reads thus, the end it came to pass in those days. That there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the Lord be a blessing to the people of God. You may be seated. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. I want to preach and provide to you this first offering entitled, Wrapped Up. Wrapped Up. Just turn to your neighbor, look him straight in the face and say, are you wrapped up? Look to the other neighbor, look to the other side, say, I noticed. Wrapped up. Wrapped up. Pray with me and stay with me. The excitement is building in my family. How about yours? It is Advent, the time of the year that we celebrate the coming Messiah. His birth. It is Christmas time and the lights, the trees, the decorations, ornaments, mistletoes, wreaths, reindeers, snowmans, and cards are going up and going out. Eggnog and fruitcake des desserts along with meals are being planned and items being purchased. You may not know this, but this time of the year is First Lady's favorite time of the year. And our family on her side, that is, is overwhelming with glee and joy. Like some of you here, we are getting together from all parts of the country this year, and every generation of our family is rearing to go. You have to understand that our family gatherings on First Lady's side are experiences like no other. We have had professional news broadcasts months in advance within our family operating as news anchors, providing videos, prepping the family on what's to come. I'm trying to tell you they take Christmas serious. We have pajama fashion shows, family cook-offs, line dancing, and paranging, paranging, which is a Trinidad singing and dancing from house to house. You start at one house, and you start singing carols, and you go out singing with pots and pans clanging and banging. Stop at the next house, pick up everybody in that house, and you go from house to house, haranguing, uh, ending with a party at the last house we stop at. I love some Trinidadian culture. All these festivities and activities lead to a mammoth gift-giving unwrapping and wrapping, tearing experience around the tree. Just imagine for a minute, 45 to 50 intergenerational folks under one tree having a massive gift exchange. Paper everywhere. Joy filling the air along with oohs and ahs as everyone observed what you received. We can always tell when the brothers wrap the gifts because they're always wrapped in two pieces. We kind of cut it short the first time and we just tape on another piece to the end of the, y'all know what I'm talking about. The edges are always frayed and not aligned. That's the way I rap, I don't know about y'all. First lady used to work in Sears and she's a professional rapper. But I, I just, all I'm trying to do is cover up the gift and get it wrapped. Two, three pizzas, it don't matter, as long as I cover the gift up. Preach, Pastor Maxwell. <laughs> and, and after this gift giving, we transition into games. Uh, some of you know White Elephant or Chinese Christmas. Uh, that's where each person gets to select a wrap gift, unwrap it, and then possibly lose it to someone else and have it selected again. Somebody can take your gift. Lord, have mercy. Uh, and being able to select from unwrapped gifts or steal your gift someone is holding is what makes this game so much fun. And in our family, it's like, let's make a deal. Because everybody start one-upping and negotiating with everybody. In today's text, God does the opposite. He gives one gift that everyone benefits from. This gift exceeds any gift ever given prior or will ever be given in the future. God gives his only begotten son to all of us. That ought to make you excited. 
And listen, the thief cannot steal it. Nobody can bid higher to take it from you. And he is yours if you're willing to receive him. God wraps him up for you, then unwraps him that you may see and know him for yourself. Listen, listen, listen. God planned to give you and I the greatest gift, a gift to all humanity. He gave it right at the same pivotal point that humanity rebelled and disappointed God greatly with our sin. It's right there in the Genesis text. And chapter 3 records the dark, dastardly, despicable, death-provoking deed of Satan and the paradise lost by mankind. How does an immutable, transcendent, all-knowing God plan the greatest gift for humanity right after his greatest heartbreak and disappointment? Love even makes God do strange things. John Milton in Paradise Lost said it this way regarding the fall of mankind. He said, they, looking back, all the eastern side beheld of paradise. So late their happy seat waved over by the flaming brand, the gate, with dreadful faces thronged in fiery arms. Some natural tears they dropped, but wiped them soon. The world was all before them, where to choose. Their place of rest and providence their guide. They, hand in hand, Adam and Eve, with wandering steps and slow, through Eden took their solitary way. Another brother, Woodrow Wyatt, said it this to describe what happened in the fall. Man falls in love through his eyes, a woman through her ears. One comedian, Bill Hicks, in a humorous moment said, I've learned a lot about a woman. I, I think I've learned exactly how the fall of man occurred in the Garden of Eden. He said, Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, Adam said one day, wow, Eve, here we are, at one with nature, at one with God, we'll never age, we'll never die, and all our dreams will come true the instant that we have them. And Eve said, said yeah, and it's just not enough, is it? I asked the question, how does an immutable, transcendent, all-knowing God plan the greatest gift for humanity right after his greatest heartbreak and disappointment? You see, God has sent Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, Joseph to build the family and a nation for God to work out man's sin predicament. Uh, God sent great leaders, Moses, Joshua, Joshua, Caleb, to guide God's people to a promised land where they would worship and follow God. God sent judges and military leaders like Ehud and Deborah, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Samuel, Eli to try to hold the loose confederation of Israel tribes together amidst their sin and rebellion. God set kings to, to rule Saul, David, Ahab, Jehu, Joshua, Jeroboam, because Israel rejected God's the theocracy. God sent prophets, major and minor, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, uh, down to Micah, Amos, and Haggai to warn, to rebuke, to correct, to offer even a fresh word and guidance for a stiff-necked people. God threw everything he could at man's wandering. Then he fell silent for 400 years between Malachi and the gospel. God knew man was wrapped up in his sin and doing their own thing. God knew mankind was wrapped up in each other, no ring, no marriage, and no repentance. God knew mankind was wrapped up in pleasing people but not pleasing God. God knew mankind was wrapped up in power, control, violence, and mayhem. God knew mankind was wrapped up in pleasure, seduction, entertainment, and sensory activity for their flesh. God knew mankind needed a remedy wrapped in his love, held together with his mercy, providing true justice, and having the power to destroy the works of the devil. And so the Luke and Isaiah text that I read to you today uh, reveals God's prophetic utterance and God's fulfillment of the prophecy that almost seems contradictory. Mm -hmm. You see, in Isaiah 9, the prophet foretells of the gift God has prepared as a remedy in a child, a son, who the world government would rest on his shoulders. He would be called Wonderful and Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his government greatness would never end. He would reign on David's throne and his kingdom will be established and uphold justice for eternity. 
And I know we need some justice in America right now. We, 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 we need justice. We don't need Trump. We need justice. We need justice. But the, but the look, when you look at the text that presents uh, the birth in time, where it says, uh, in Caesar's Augustus, a son was born of a virgin named Mary who does appear to have nothing. Where is all the power? Where is all the government? It looks like they have nothing, no power, no home. He's born in a smelly manger wrapped in rags and torn pieces of cloth. He's homeless. He can't even give a hotel room. He, he's birthed. His birth is surrounded by people whispering. Uh, you think really Mary uh, 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 didn't sleep with another man? Ain't she a teenager? Baby mama drama surrounding the birth uh, of, of, the, of the Lord. The story is wrapped with so much. And I want to say to you that this story is wrapped with insight for you and I to live on. Uh, can I give it to you real quick? This is not going to be a long sermon. First... There is more to your birth. There's more to your birth. What do you mean, Pastor? The condition surrounding your birth does not determine your destiny. If you can't learn that from the text, you're missing it. You can be born an unwed teenager. You can be born a, a teenage, from a teenage mother. You can have homeless circumstances. You can have a drug-ridden home, abuse and neglect, poor and no room to live. You can come from smelly projects and dirty streets. You can live in the margins of the barrios and on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, if daddy don't want you, mama too busy for you, you can be in foster care, no care, adoptive care, and on welfare. You can be black, blind, disabled, uh, in a racist society, under siege every day, uh, be in a police state, murderous herods and pharaohs all around us, or you could come out of slavery, cotton fields, you name it. God's gift wrapped up in humanity and swallowing rags and a smelly manger says, I'm much more than the condition I'm birthed in. And I don't, you can look at where I come from, you can talk me down, but I'm not the sum total of the condition I came out of, but I, I got a new birth that I hold on to that makes all things new in my life. Everything in my life didn't go right. Uh, my conditions of my birth circumstances ain't right. Uh, mama and daddy didn't agree. Daddy was an alcoholic. There was abuse and problems, but it don't define who I am in Jesus. It don't define me. You may try to define me. Others may try to define you. But you got to understand, you are not the sum total of your parents' mistakes. You are much more than your mistakes. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. And so the conditions of your birth, stop being a victim all your life. You are now saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, it hurt. Yes, you have wounds. But I'm much more than my wounds. I'm much more than my addictions. I'm much more than my pain. I'm much more than my problems. I'm much more than what they talk about. I, I'm a child of God, and I have been redeemed. Jesus, help me, God. There's more to your birth. Secondly, I want you to know not only there's more wrapped up in your birth, there is more wrapped up in this birth in the text. To get a manger, to get in a manger in Bethlehem. But God to put Christ in a manger in Bethlehem. God the Father already wrapped this revelation around his infinite mind. Stay with me now. God had already wrapped this word in love and time. God had already wrapped the sunlight up tight in the midst of a dark predicament. God had already wrapped Logos in Kairos and Kronos. Daddy, Abba, God the Father, already wrapped Adam a 2.0 to solve Adam 1.0 mess. There's much more uh, in this birth. God who is Jehovah Raphae, our healer, wrap your healing in the manger. Uh, God, who's Jehovah Elohim, our creator, wrap your gifts of creativity and the power to make you a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away, and behold, I'm made new. Stop holding on to your past. 
He's doing a new thing, but you got to let him do it. Let him do it. Let him make you over. God, who's Jehovah, Sakini, you, uh, your righteousness, wrap your, your sins in his blood and make everything wrong uh, that was wrong in your life right. God, who's Jehovah Shalom, uh, right in that manger, your peace, your peace of mind, your ability to sleep and rest in God is right there in the manger texture. Uh, peace in your heart uh, is in the manger. Uh, I know uh, there's somebody in here just dying to have peace for once in a while. For once in my life, just, just give me a little bit of peace. Uh, you, you move from drama to chaos to crisis, from drama to chaos to crisis, from drama to chaos, and all you want is peace. I want you to know today in Advent that your peace is in the manger. God, who is Jehovah Odanai, our sovereign God, wrap your salvation, deliverance, redemption, and fulfillment in that manger. There's much more to this birth. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, help me. Yeah, I hear you go, yeah, yes. Uh, wrapped there in the lowly estate and the humble conditions is the future, your future in the kingdom. Your joy, your peace, your hope, your love, and your freedom. Uh, finally, not only there is more wrapped in your birth and more wrapped in this birth in the manger, but there is more wrapped in this legacy. The other night, and I, they tell me it was the finale of the Fox show Empire. I know some of you saw it. You saw it. It's good. I won't even ask who saw it. <laughs> when it first started, I, I, I took a peek at it, then I realized I couldn't, I couldn't hang with it because they were putting stuff in there that just was so unclean. But nevertheless, they, the Fox show Empire captured a revelation. I saw it on the internet, and it caught my attention. Uh, the, uh, what's her name? She plays Cookie. Taraje. Y'all know who I'm talking about. She said to Kareem, the young rapper son, something so powerful that is relevant to this word. She said, the Lion Dynasty is our company, but Empire is our legacy. And she looked at her son and said, anybody who's trying to steal that from us is our enemy. Do you understand? Yeah, that's a word up in there. Yeah. I'm going to preach that another day, but I just want you to get this point before you go home on this Advent season. Because we have a legacy, a Christian legacy, wrapped in this manger. And so when you talk legacy, all of us should want a legacy. A legacy is what I will be leaving uh, for the people connected to me at my departure. And Jesus who was born to die is in the manger, but the manger is a portal to the cross. In that manger is Calvary. In, in that manger is Christ's suffering. In, in that manger is Christ's victory. Uh, in that manger is Christ's resurrection. In that manger is your new birth. In that manger is Christian legacy of faith and witnessing. You see, we, we know he was born to die, but we, we forget uh, he's born also to give you new life. And, and you have a legacy. He just doesn't give you new life for you to just be you. He, he gives you new, you new life for you to be used of him. That you would be committed to go change the world, not for your name's sake. We are spending too much time building our own legacies. We are spending too much time building our own name, trying to get our cards out, trying to get our music out, trying to get our sermons out, trying to get, it ain't about us. He saved us to use us, to glorify him. It ain't about us. And so everything we do, it's about our legacy in him. He leaves us a legacy to live for him and be willing to die for him. Oh, see, y'all, y'all, y'all. That humble manger 
represents the power, listen here, to fight the enemy. You see, Jesus' birth was surrounded by a lot of bloodshed. Babies died on behalf of his birth. People were being murdered trying to track down who he was. There was so much mayhem and violence that was around the birth of Jesus. And we need to understand that that, that manger uh, tells us that we get the power to fight demons. To fight the hell that keeps coming at us. Anybody been going through some hell recently? Anybody had to really endure sometimes? Uh, been going up and down and around and you, you're side and sick and tired of it? The legacy of the departure of Jesus is in the arrival of Jesus. Uh, and so we got a legacy of power to fight for the territory, listen, of your heart, your family, your home, your community, your nation, your church, every nephew, niece, brother, sister, auntie, mother, friend, co-worker, you got a legacy to be able to fight. And we need to learn how to fight for territory. We, we, we've got power to fight against terrorist police. We got power to fight against terrorists like ISIS. We, we got power to fight anyone trying to destroy the church. The church, uh, I'm going to say it like cookie, the church is our earthly instrument. The kingdom is our legacy. Do you understand me? And so, it's simple. Everything in the text is wrapped up because you've been wrapped up. And the true test of your faith in God is whether, listen, you will wrap up your life tight in Christ. Will you wrap everything you do around the ethic of love that Jesus presents to all of us? Will you wrap your life around his word and his will? Will you wrap your life so tightly, package him so beautifully, and then present him to the world? You see, because when you really wrap Jesus all in your life, you go out and you unwrap. And you unwrap and you present Jesus to a dying world. And the problem today is nobody is unwrapping the greatest gift in the world today. It's time for a change. I believe God is ready for a change. He said, I, I, I've been wrapped up so long, but, but will you unwrap me and present me to a world? Because the world is dying. The world is hurting. And all they need to know that the gift has already been given. The gift of eternal life, uh, the gift of joy in the midst of trials, the gift of possibilities in the midst of pain, the, the gift of holiness and, and wholeness in Christ. All you got to do is when you leave church is to unwrap the gift and watch the gift. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Is there anybody in here that want to lift him up? Is there anybody know how to lift him up? Do you got a, a worship in your mouth, a praise in your mouth? Do you know how to lift them up? Come on, lift them up. Come on, lift them up. Don't sit down on him. Get up, wrap up in him. Give him some praise. He did too much for you. He died for you. He lived for you. He loved for you. He pursued you. He loves you so much. He's worthy to be unwrapped the world. Father, thank you, Lord, for giving each one of us new life. You so love the world that you gave your only begotten son. Oh, God, wrapped up in so much love. And you have presented and given it to the church, and we refuse to unwrap the gift. Father, forgive us for being wrapped up in ourselves. Forgive us for being wrapped up in a man or a woman. Forgive us for being wrapped up in our problems and our pains. Father, help us to lay aside all those things that we wrapped up in. 
and be wrapped up in you. That's all we need. And we shall experience salvation, deliverance, redemption, and true fulfillment. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Everybody standing here today? Maybe you've been wrapped up in so many things, but you have not been wrapped up in God.